Starting in the mid-1960s, Michelangelo Antonioni became what the German essayist Hans Magnus Enzensberger would call a tourist of the revolution. Antonioni left Italy to make blow up, 1966, in swinging London, Zabriskie Point, 1970, in Radical California and, most controversially, a three and a half hour TV documentary in the People's Republic of China. The subject of prolonged, vitriolic attacks by the Chinese government, and largely unseen in the decades since it was initially televised in 1973, Antonioni's Chung Kuo China is showing for a week from an excellent 35mm print at the Museum of Modern Art, as the postscript. To the museum's Antonioni retrospective. It is a major accomplishment by a great filmmaker. Antonioni began his career making documentaries, the first was People of the Po Valley, and he continued to direct them occasionally throughout his life. None were nearly as long or complex as Chung Kuo, which takes its title and something of its perspective from a Chinese term for China meaning center of the world. By the end of the movie, China becomes synonymous with civilization. Invited by Mao Zedong's government to make a film, Antonioni arrived in China in the spring of 1972, shortly after Richard Nixon's historic visit, and filmed there for approximately five weeks. His movie, which has three parts the first set in Beijing, the second in various towns and cities along the Yangtze River and the third in Shanghai is leisurely and largely observational as it follows an itinerary established by official minders. Antonioni conducts no interviews, and ambient Chinese is untranslated. Long passages in which his camera simply watches groups of people engaged in various activities provide something like a tranquil flood of information. Antonioni, who provides the film's laconic voiceover, documented events ranging from Tai Chi exercises in a Beijing park and an unofficial, barely sanctioned flea market in Hunan province to a caesarean procedure in which the woman receives acupuncture in lieu of an anesthetic. His locations include the Forbidden City, a Shanghai tea house reserved for Communist Party elders and the streets of a near-deserted mountain village whose inhabitants, he tells us, have never seen a Westerner. Everything is of interest. Watching food preparation in a cavernous, bustling restaurant in Suzhou, Antonioni Riley admits that it was the Chinese who invented fettuccine. While heroic murals loom over the ordinary Chinese, the children, Antonioni says, are the stars of schoolroom propaganda exercises, not least. Chung Kuo alternates between the Brownian motion of bustling crowds and the spectacle of organized humanity. The movie ends with a lengthy sequence, perhaps a half hour of acrobats and jugglers performing feats of balance and dexterity. Antonioni's sense of China as offering a vast repertoire of human behavior might seem patronizing, but his travelogue is generally affirmative and admiring as well as entrancing. When a shortened version, running two hours with commercials, was televised as part of an ABC News special in early 1973, the New York Times critic John J. O'Connor praised Chung Kuo as visually breathtaking and characterized by a degree of sophistication that would appear to be beyond the capabilities or experience of most American television. Mr. O'Connor also noted the degree of cool objectivity maintained by the director toward his subject. This was not regarded as a virtue by Chinese authorities. Although Chung Kuo seems to have been initially praised by the Chinese diplomats who previewed it in Italy, Antonioni was soon after accused of perpetrating a malicious slander. Perhaps caught in a political struggle between the relatively liberal Zhou Enlai, the first premier of the People's Republic of China, and that country's hardline gang of four, 
the director became the target of an orchestrated campaign. Wall posters in Beijing showed his face covered with swastikas, he was denounced as a lackey of both Benito Mussolini and the Soviet leader Leonid Brezhnev. The film, of course, went unseen it was not publicly shown in China until 2004 when it was screened to 800 people at the Beijing Film Academy. Attacked by the Italian Communist Party as well, Chung Kuo was subjected to boisterous protests at the 1973 Venice Film Festival. The Italian government had done everything possible to prevent the showing, Umberto Eco wrote in an essay concerning the difficulty of being Marco Polo, the 13th century Italian merchant and traveller to whom Antonioni several times compares himself, noting that the screening took place while police held an enormous, tense crowd at bay. Stunned and hurt by the ferocity of this response, Antonioni wrote in his own defence that Chung Kuo was not about China but the Chinese people, and that he did not travel to China to understand it, but rather to look at it and record what he saw. We could only glance, he says at one point during the film. Chung Kuo is that glimpse and more, a tourist's snapshot that has the heft of a monument. <laughs>